Average Dude has something to say about... Everybody, welcome back to a new week. Uh, this episode is going to deal with the problem with America's Christian churches. This is going to be a very difficult episode for me to do because this is this is tough for me to talk about this one but I'm going to uh, there's something that we're if you're why if people who aren't Christians or atheists or whatever if you just flat out don't believe in Christianity or don't follow it you're probably looking at Christians in the uh, in the United States and thinking wow you're a bunch of hateful out of control jackasses and there's a lot of truth to that anymore. I have such a difficult time doing this episode, you will never, ever truly understand. Um, and I'm seeing videos and I'm, I'm reading people's blog posts and uh, it's the usual uh, bit where we're losing our grasp with, we're not uh, with God. There's an underlying problem that churches need to deal with in this country and that is why? They're not willing to... I've said this before. We have a problem in this country, in the world in general, but in the United States especially, with accepting responsibility for our own screw-ups and problems. We are pointing the fingers at each other. And the Christian church is doing this big time. I, the church is losing congregants all over the place. Churches are closing right and left all over... And they hate, they think that it's an attack from the outside. The attack is not on the outside. The problem with the church is that it's been dying a very slow and pay, painful cancerous internal death for a while. And I'll go over why. Uh, for those who do not like hearing this, screw you. The years have been incredibly painful for those of us that have gone and had to endure all this. It's time for this to come out, okay? The atmosphere in the Christian church has become very toxic. I mean, the church itself I, doesn't even realize how loyal their congregants are. It, Christians are so very loyal, loyal to a fault. When congregants leave, and when they're gone and people start dropping off like flies, I'm hearing the churches blame the congregants that are still there. You don't do that. The church does not respect their congregations. I mean, non-Christians, and they think that the non-Christians in the secular world is the problem. They are not the problem. The problem is internal. It's inside the church. Been there the whole time. So I... Hey, Non-Christians in the secular world, blaming them is ridiculous because the secular world has always been there. There have always been non-Christians, and yet the church has had better times. So what's changed? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. There's a huge, uh, this elitist, we're, we're good, strangers are bad movement. I th This attitude problem really needs to... Good heavens. Overly political. It never ceases to amaze me over the years how much time in the sermons is spent. on. They spend more time on everything else but the Bible itself. Hello? I, I might as well just go over where I'm coming from. Because I'm just, as an average dude, this actually works. I'm your regular run-of-the-mill dude that was brought up as a Protestant Christian. I a Baptist church upbringing, actually. There was a really big Baptist church that was, uh, that was created in uh, my, where I grew up. Really big building. They definitely had money. They, but I loved it. Uh, they had buses for to actually pick the kids up throughout the entire area and bring them to Sunday school. How cool is that? I... We learned so, you know, the, the songs, Jesus loves me, yes I know, and we got to have fun games. You, know, you can have fun learning about the Bible. Whoever said that spirituality couldn't be fun, you're full of it. It can be fun. You can have fun 
being good and doing good things and learning good, valuable spiritual lessons. And Sunday school was such a great uh, foundation for that, for the young. And you had your little, <laughs> those uh, th that game where you, you look up a verse, <laughs> Matthew 5, 14, charge! And you're going through the Bible, and then some people, you know, some kids cheated. They had little <laughs> index, little things sticking out, saying which book. So, like, oh, okay. <laughs> While everyone who didn't have that's like frantically trying to leaf through the pages. But, you know, just good stuff. Just regular. It, it was a very, very positive uh, experience. And then it changed. Now, when you're a kid, Sunday school is fun. When you're an adult, that's when everybody falls to sleep and uh, they don't want to come anymore. And this is where you lose people. But what happened with me was especially damaging. There was talk. All of a sudden, it just came out of nowhere uh, one Sunday when I was 11 years old and that the pastor was leaving and it just came right out of the blue there was no warning there were a bunch of elders there i didn't get this as a kid but i'll go over the elder situation in a bit and they were saying and, and even the other the teachers and the instructors they didn't get it they didn't know what was going on well the the kids that were like old enough to be brought in they were bringing um my age group into the uh, sanctuary early before adult services and instead of having a regular early morning service we sat in there in the sanctuary with the pastor and the uh, elders lined up you know at the you know in the back like this eagle eyes the whole time Elders make me very uncomfortable, by the way. For those of you who are watching this that are elders, you really, you are part of the problem. Wow. But the pastor, and I'm not going to say his name because I realize it's not his fault, and I'll explain why, but he was, he gave the most uncomfortable sermon I have ever heard, and it lasted all these years. I, I was 11 at the time, and he was getting really animated and loud and talking about how um, divorce was a big thing in his speech. People who get to divorce, they're automatically going to hell, and I wish I was kidding about this, but this is why this stuck with me. If anyone in your family gets a divorce, you are going to hell too. Even kids. I was so uncomfortable with that. I, all, all of us were. We didn't know what to make of it. And when it was done, I remember walking out in the hallway and the elders had these smiles on their faces and the pastor was, you know, farther down near the end of the hallway and he had his head like this. I, I didn't get it as a kid. I know now. He was pressured into doing what he was doing. There are politics in the church, no matter what the denomination is, and that is the problem the political aspect they it, it, it the church all of them in america are mismanaged mismanagement run by people with very bad messages with very uh, ulterior motives self-serving they're in their they're so toxic and bad for the church it's not even funny and they are absolutely like a cancer spreading to the end Congregants are leaving left and right. This has been going on for many years, but we haven't talked about it. I'm going to talk about it. This made me so uncomfortable, and we were brought back down to where the kids section was, and then literally, like like that, I saw smiles on the the, the, the child instructor's faces. They're like, "Good news, everybody! The pastor's staying! Yay!" And I I never went back. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. It wasn't that pastor's fault. It was the fault of the hierarchy looking down, the elders, the eagle eyes for the higher ups, looking down and making certain that that pastor did what they wanted him to do. They're bad for the church.